I'm Scott L. Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Have you ever thought about the possibility of retiring someday, but you worry that it's going to be kind of rough? Or you've thought about retiring, but you're not sure when you're going to be able to do so. Or maybe you haven't really thought about retiring, but you have some money saved up. You're in a position where, oh, you would be okay, but maybe you don't have it. Did you ever think that maybe there's a way that you could retire a lot earlier than you had otherwise planned? Well, maybe you can, and maybe you can't. I don't really know, but we're going to talk about how that might be possible and why as you have probably guessed, that Nicaragua may play into that possibility on today's show. So we're gonna get to that right after the bump. Now, not everyone wants to get to retirement as soon as possible. There's some people who actually like working and are looking forward to working until the last possible minute. And while that may seem tongue in cheek, it's actually true. And I'm one of those people. I have no plans to actually race to retirement or anything of the sort. Or if I do, it's only a technicality that I'm looking to retire from my main job and focus on other things such as making videos. But that's whatever it means good for you. You know, retirement could represent a chance to stop working and just spend more time uh, watching TV, going out uh, and having beers, enjoying the sunset or whatever, or retirement may mean an opportunity for you to stop focusing on working for someone else or running your own business really hard and instead spending that time doing hobbies that may or may not turn into a business themselves, but the expectation is that they don't need to be the kind of business that you have to rely on in the same sort of way. Or maybe you retirement could just be pulling back to an easy easier form of business, whatever makes sense for you. But what's interesting is so many people when they're looking at Nicaragua are looking at it as a possibility of making retirement a little bit better because as many of you know, it's lower cost of living and that means that uh, you know your retirement funds are going to go farther, you have more comfort, less risk, and that makes a lot of sense. So uh, you know, when I first started helping uh, my friend Alan, who's on the channel and, and shows up quite a bit, you know, he was looking at Nicaragua as a long-term retirement plan. And as many people do, right, you come down wherever it is you're going to be looking to retire and you say, well, you know, maybe I want to uh, invest in a retirement home many years before I actually retire. And that gives me an opportunity to enjoy it for a long period of time, uh, become part of the community, get to know the area, all kinds of things. So that when retirement finally comes at 62, 65, 70, that when I move there, I will already have some amount of things established. My house will be ready and comfortable. I won't have this moving to a new place feeling. When I get there, I'll have a going to my other home feeling and it just transitions from what was my primary becomes my secondary, what was my secondary becomes my primary home. And that's a great potential way to go. And for a lot of people, that's gonna to continue to make sense, absolutely. But when doing this, when you're looking at this process or, or considering something anything like it, there's also the very real possibility that if you had been planning on, let's say, you're going to retire at 65 and you're going to have everything saved up, you're going to be ready to retire at 65, and you do this and you get a home and you're, you're looking at, you find a place, right? Good. Spend time before you're ready to retire figuring out where you think you want to retire so that when you do come to retirement time, whenever that is, you're able to action the things that make you happiest fastest. For an awful lot of people, that means just staying where they always were. They want to stay near family. They want to stay near the restaurant that they're used to. They want to go to the same diner every morning. That's fine. But if you're someone who's looking at moving somewhere for your retirement, you're looking at uh, whether it's an adventure or you just want a quieter pace of life around you, or you want a lower cost of living or different weather, then figuring out what place is best for you is definitely best to do before you're going to retire rather than waiting until retirement and then potentially spending a large portion of your retirement running around trying to figure out something that would have been easier and more effective to do much earlier. Retirement is a popular discussion in Nicaragua because the low cost of living, the high safety record, the good, solid, stable, warm weather, and really attractive retirement visas make Nicaragua a really ideal place for an awful lot of people to look to retire. Now, I have mentioned before a lot of people uh, who are looking at retiring here may not actually need the retirement visa depending on your lifestyle and your plans. So just be aware, every time I mention that, I feel like I have to preface that with or caveat that, that people think that visa is always required and that is not the case. But it, it may be 
that you want that visa. And if so, it is very easy to get as a retiree, but there's also a very good chance that you will not want it or need it because maybe you're gonna travel and this is just gonna be your home base. In many cases, you won't need it. That's a separate discussion. We've talked about that ad nauseum on the channel in many other discussions. So if you have questions, of course, go down in the comments and ask away. I love getting to answer uh, your guys' questions down there and your comments and your ideas and you know all that. So whatever you have, just go down there and ask away. And of course, uh, there are instructions if you go way down through all the stuff in the comments and the show notes uh, as to how you could take a video of yourself and send that in so you can actually be on the show to ask your questions and I'll respond to that that way. That'd be great. Anyway, so when we're talking about potential retirement, you find the right place. Nicaragua is often on a short list. It, it really checks the retirement boxes in a really strong way. Now, I'm not retired. I'm here living because this is a great place to be a home base uh, for my family. My kids are relatively little. I guess now they're teenagers, but when, when we came, they were relatively little. Uh, when we first came, my daughter was like three and a half, uh, so they were they were quite little when we came here, and uh, it, you know it's been a wonderful place to call home. But so many people are coming here because of retirement. Now Alan is a great example. He was looking at it as a long term retirement plan, but once he came down and really started looking at Nicaragua and and fell in love with it and decided this was his retirement plan. That was his first thing, right? Oh, this is the place I want to retire. Yes, check that box. But then and essentially instantly in his case, he started the thought process of, but why would I wait until retirement? I could move here essentially immediately. Um, this happened right as COVID hit. So the being able to move immediately did not go the way that he had hoped. But uh, for all of us, right, we got, we got hit by that. But that was the timing. But he came down and if you take out the time of COVID, basically he immediately turned around and said, why wouldn't I move as fast as I could rent a home and, and choose a town and, and make a decision? And that's essentially what he did. It was a little bit longer than that, but it was, it was really close, it was very fast. And he came down and now in his case, he didn't decide to retire immediately. He's a bit young for that. He decided to keep working and work from here, but work from and live in Nicaragua so that when retirement comes, all he has to do is stop working. He doesn't then have to move. He doesn't have to uh, uproot his life. He is establishing his uh, friends and social group and, and family and house and neighborhood and, and uh, you know, his local bar and all those things are being established here for the last decades leading up to his retirement so that when retirement comes, he's not doing this with that particular intent, but he's doing it because this is the place that he wants to live. This has the lifestyle that he's seeking and the low cost, and because of that low cost, it means that he's able, in his case, without retiring early, he's able to save more for retirement by spending less day to day. He is in a better position when the time of retirement comes beyond just being in the place he already wants to be and having that ease of having already moved in place. So it's making it easier, but it's also giving him a big financial advantage uh, going towards that. And I'm in the same boat. If I stayed in the United States and, and worked towards retirement, my month to month cost in the US would be two or three or even four times what it is here in Nicaragua. It would be much, much higher. And because of that, I would just have that much less leading up to retirement. That would make retirement more painful when it finally came and, and could mean that I have to wait longer to do it because I would need to save up, have, I need more time to save and less time to spend. I'd have to make that adjustment. So for both of us, simply by being here and continuing working, being in the place where we eventually will retire gives us a huge financial advantage that makes retirement better, makes it stronger, more comfortable, less, less of a worry, and very importantly, potentially moves it early. So we may be in a position where we decide, either of us, to retire early when the time comes, simply because the lower monthly outgoing once we retire and the higher savings per month before we retire offset those numbers very quickly and can shift that forward. Potentially for us five or 10 years earlier retirement, well within reach simply because of the move, simply because we chose the right place and moved there early enough to make that big of a difference in, in the overall financial picture. That's not even what I was looking to say today, but that's an important consideration when you're looking at these pictures. Now, of course, not everyone can do that, right? Some people have to come down and only spend their vacations here. Their job has no, their career has no means of moving to Nicaragua. You can't even consider that. That's a possibility. So not everyone can do this, but an awful lot of people can. A lot of the people who are looking uh, have absolutely the ability to do this, and, and it's something to consider because it 
doesn't normally hit your radar as something that people realize they can do because not very many jurisdictions allow them to do that not very many jurisdictions have this wild difference in income uh, amounts and tax amounts and cost of living amounts and things that make it possible for this type of uh, uh, decision to make such an unbelievably noticeable impact on your final retirement if you do to do the same thing to mexico you easily would end up yeah maybe you can retire six months early but they, that'd be kind of it whereas here very easily you could end up with you know 10 years early 15 years early depending on when you do it and how diligent you are with using your newfound wealth to put towards retirement rather than spending it on things but one of the nice things about living in this region is there is simply a uh a, a, We've talked about this in the in the consumerism video. There is a, a social pressure to not go out and just spend money for no reason. It is much easier to put it away and save it for a rainy day, and that rainy day could be retirement in this case. There's a new movement with younger generations, and of course, they may change their minds as they get older. But with previous generations, and my own included, with boomers and Gen X and even Gen Y, millennials, there is a belief that you need to save up as much as possible, get to retirement as late as possible, and have this biggest possible nest egg so that you have lots of money to spend during retirement and you have this amazingly luxurious retirement. And that sounds great and there's reasons why some people might want to do that and that's what we were brought up to kind of plan towards and that gives us an opportunity to potentially leave a nest egg for future generations if we manage to do that and we don't live in a place like the united states where they have an unbelievable tax on uh on death tax on, on leaving funds to our uh, to our children or grandchildren. If you have a place that taxes heavily like that, that erodes that value very quickly. And unless you have enough wealth to work around that, you're pretty much stuck having that go to the government in majority rather than going to future generations. So that's not necessarily all that advantageous. Of course, there's ways to work around it, but they get complex and you have to do them. And a lot of times when people are in retirement, they're not willing to do them if they didn't do them earlier in life. But this new movement that is popular with Gen Z, Gen Alpha, is to start to plan to only earn enough and save enough during your career to allow yourself to retire as early as possible and then to li li live as lean as possible until you no longer need to do so anymore. And in doing this, they're focusing on not having to work as much as possible. The traditional model is work as much as you possibly can for as long as you can so that when you finally can't work anymore, you have the financial resources to really enjoy being completely exhausted. But the newer thought process is that instead of working really, really hard for your entire life in the hopes that you will be able to retire and be able to live for a long time in retirement and spend what you've saved up is very risky. Some people don't live that long. Some people have financial disaster later in life. Some people have medical conditions and that causes their nest egg to be hit for medical conditions. It could be that uh, taxes hit them. There could be surprises. Any number of things can happen and suddenly that planning falls apart and they don't get the value out of it after having spent a lifetime working really hard trying to protect themselves. It actually carries quite a bit of risk and doesn't carry all that much reward. If you do it and you get to that point of retiring and you're successful, it does have a small reward, but that reward is actually relatively small, especially compared to the grand scheme of your entire life. It's maximizing one very small and high risk portion of your life versus uh, prioritizing the lifetime as a whole. So it actually makes a lot of sense for a lot of people to consider this as something that may make sense. And as this has become a popular movement, it really does highlight how much less you actually potentially need to work throughout your life, how saving that and just planning towards retiring as soon as you hit enough is something that may make sense. Why uh, work so hard to have large amounts of cash during your retirement? Very few people who get to retirement are actually looking to spend so much more than before they retired. In most cases, they want to spend much less. I mean, everyone wants to spend as much as possible, but their needs, the things that makes them happy is often much less. They have time to do things. They have time when you're retired to, to not have to spend money to work around things. When you're working and you're busy and you barely get time to sleep because you're going from job to job, spending a lot of money to commute quickly to be able to work in just the right environments to live as close to the office as possible. All kinds of things in life are all about paying 
extra to make yourself more efficient. But when you get to retirement, you can spend time cooking for yourself. You can spend time shopping at the grocery store. You can go when things are cheap. How many people take vacations? Because when they're working, they have to go when there's holidays at work or when uh, teachers off for the summer and you pay a premium. You pay a premium on flights, you pay a premium on tickets to events. Everything costs two or three times as much because you're stuck on a schedule of working. Retirees with no retirement discounts, just being a retiree and having flexible schedules often reduces the cost of doing many of the things in life simply because you can do them at your leisure and do them at times that are much cheaper. If we take this theory, this is the idea that we really just want to have more of a minimal lifestyle and get more out of life as a whole, it opens up some possibilities. And one of those possibilities is moving earlier in life, possibly when retired. And like I said, you may be able to move even before you retire, but let's assume you can't and you simply need to save less and you decide that what you want to do, let's say you're planning for a retirement where you need $5,000 a month as a, a monthly income that you're gonna be able to pull on, and that's what you plan you're gonna be able to live on, and so you say, when will I be able to retire based on the need to be able to pull this much per month? And you, you do your calculations, you say, okay, I can, I can retire at 65, and you're saving towards that throughout your career. But then you make the decision, wait, if I move to Nicaragua, or somewhere similar, but Nicaragua is a great example, and I'm willing to live a different lifestyle. I look at what's available. Maybe I'm going to save up something from this so I can buy a house rather than paying a monthly rent. Or maybe I just want to work in a monthly rent. I know some people talk about uh, how they don't want to have to worry about rent during retirement, which I highly recommend for most people. However, if you're going to retire quite early, this gives you a very different uh, potential. It gives you time to research the places, do all the things that I warn about in the retirement buying homes video get way more time out of the purchase, have more time uh, to course correct if you have to, more time to switch if necessary, um, uh, more time to plan and do all that. Anyway, you could do that. You could buy a house and get that into your planning and it could be a very small, reasonable place, right? You don't need the same uh, big house potentially. You get this price, you get it down and maybe with the right planning, whether it's renting or buying or whatever, you can come out and say, oh, I don't need $5,000 a month to retire like I thought when I was looking at the United States or looking at Canada, wherever my home country is, and assuming the big house and the mortgage and all this. I've, I've targeted a completely different thing. I've managed to do this thing. And now I'm thinking I could make it on $1,200 a month, $1,500 a month, and possibly have the same lifestyle. If you're looking at moving from the U.S. to Nicaragua, it's very possible that five, dollars $6,000 a month in the United States will only be twelve dollars to $1,800 per month here in Nicaragua. Food, a little bit cheaper. Housing, so much cheaper. It's just crazy. Uh, and then, of course, when you're looking at retirement, maybe uh, you have two cars in the United States, but, well, you're just going to get by with one car. And that's not Nicaragua making things cheaper. That's just retiring making things cheaper. But those are budgets that maybe work worth looking at that a few of those decisions you could be by combining Nicaragua into your picture or someplace like Nicaragua you could be potentially lowering the need for money in retirement so dramatically that with doing nothing else the same plan that you always had to retire change that one number and it may bring your retirement age from 65 to 55 or 50 maybe even 45 that would be pretty dramatic but that's a really realistic thing, it's pretty reasonably easy for someone who wants to retire at 50, if you're working in the United States, working in Canada, and you wanna save throughout your career, be aggressive a little bit, live a little bit leaner, which is good, you get used to not buying things you don't need, and then suddenly be at 50, 55 years old, maybe even less, in a position to very comfortably already own a home or already have a rental, already have a place picked out, retire and move and maintain a lifestyle and be comfortable and feel safe and be able to enjoy so much more of life and do whatever it is you want to do, whether that's just relax or go hang out at the bar with your buddies, watch sports all day, work on writing the great uh, Nicaraguan novel, uh, go uh, you know, take up a career in vlogging on YouTube, whatever it is that makes you happy, you can do those things. Go paint, go sketch, become a, a cellist and, and perform whatever it is that makes you happy. Suddenly you have time to pursue that potentially because Nicaragua could be through its lower cost of living and many other benefits like the, the great healthcare and the uh, uh, really good uh, public transportation and the safety and all those things and the weather, you don't have to worry about winters and all the prices that, that come with uh, the cost of living that comes with changing seasons, right? Think about that. How much does a wardrobe cost 
in New York, simply because you have to have summer clothes and winter clothes, and you probably want to have some in-between clothes. And that's how we lived. Growing up, we always had all these wardrobes. We had to put away an entire wardrobe and take out an entire different one for different seasons. Well, that costs a lot of money that you don't think about because it's just a cost of living that you have to have when you live in those areas. But when you come to Nicaragua, suddenly you're like, wait, I don't need Maybe I need a little bit more clothing because it's one season I, I'm cycling through it, but you only need 10, 15% more than a single season in the North, not double or triple. And that these little things really can add up and suddenly you may be able to reasonably look at retirement at ages you never thought possible. And I'm not saying that that's right for everyone by any stretch, but there's a lot of people for whom retirement is their goal and they feel it's very far off or possibly unobtainable. That is sadly becoming much of the American nightmare that the, and the Canadian, I think even more, that the cost of retirement may be so, so insurmountable that the ability to retire is never really within reach or it's looking at ages where it feels impossible, where you're so tired and you're so exhausted that trying to get there is, is terrifying having suddenly the option and realizing that it's possible to definitely retire and, and retire possibly much earlier could be exactly the dream that they've been looking for. And, and you just had no idea it was there. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy, but so many people don't think of the finances that way. They don't think of how that could play out. Yes, when you say Nicaragua is cheaper, they go, well, and they think about all the uprooting and, and the stress of moving to a new place and the unknown. And yeah, all those things are, are things. But, but when you really look at, oh, but the, the actual non-emotional pieces, it, I could eat healthier. I could have great weather if you can handle the warmth. I can have really low cost of, of living. It's safer than the US, not as safe as Canada, but it's, it's safe, right? And, and you put these things together and say, wait, and I could do all that and I could retire potentially quite comfortably at an age so much younger than I'd ever imagined. Why would I really seriously consider anything else? If you're worried that you're, now if you just love work and you never wanna retire, different. But if you're normal people, not like me, and you say, but I don't want to work till I'm 70. I want to stop working the moment I can. And I want to be happy and eat good food and enjoy a good beer and watch the TV shows that I love. And I want to write a book and I want to paint and I want to sleep anytime I want. And I want to stay up late anytime I want. And I want to watch any sporting event that I want and not have to worry about, but I have work the next day or the schedule for a meeting or I have to travel for work, none of those things. What if that was in your grasp right now or very soon? Do you really want to day by day give up your option of retiring when maybe you could do it as soon as possible? And of course, combining moving to, if you're in that position where you can do the first thing I said, move to Nicaragua early and start putting away more every month and plan on retiring early, you could potentially move those numbers up even farther and be here establishing that life even sooner. In many ways, it's kind of like, and I think Alan would agree, that coming down and living here and working from here feels a lot like being halfway retired already. Life is slower. Life is more relaxed. Everything is more relaxed. Yeah, there's a few things that, uh, that come up. It's not 100% all handed to you. It's not all roses and, and life on a silver platter, but it is consistently less stress, less rushing around, less work, less cost, than where we had lived previously. And all of that means that the amount of work we do, the way that we need to interact with our working lives is changed in such a way that it starts to give a bit of feeling of retirement and easing into retirement could be something that is just that much, that much more fluid, right? Being in the right place, already having the house, already getting it set up and then just making the decision. At this point, we have enough money saved, we can do it. We can make the amount we need to make per month for forever and it doesn't matter if we make it five years into retirement or 50 years because you retired that early that you have the possibility of having 50 years and it's is it really retirement or is it just the second half of your life where you're free from having to work for someone 
And of course, at any time during that time, you could be like, you know what, I have a business idea, I'm gonna try it. I have a, I, I have a hobby and it, and it decided to make money. I decided I wanted to be an artist and I never needed to make money, but oh, 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 someone decided to pay me for a concert, well, and I made money, right? You could increase that income, but not in a way where you have to go to work, where you have to, you could still do it in a retirement way, in a hobby way. Now, of course, those things don't tend to make as much money, don't, don't bank on them, but they're there as a possibility. There's also the possibility of returning to work at some point if you just get bored or you decide you have to. Nothing stops you from doing that and nothing stops you from starting a business or doing whatever. But that freedom is something that most people fear they will never get. And Nicaragua might be the key for you or someplace like Nicaragua to being able to consider making that decision much earlier with a much higher degree of confidence that you will definitely be able to afford your retirement and make it for as long as you want and have a retirement that is in many cases so much better than what most people ever imagined they would be able to do in their retirement. How many people actually get the chance to retire to a beautiful beach, to a beautiful colonial city, to a beautiful mountain town, and be able to afford living in paradise when that's just thought of as this nearly unobtainable vacation destination in most cases. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That helps cover the cost of cameras and, and time. And this is a huge effort to do. I really appreciate everyone who helps to make this possible. It really does mean a lot to me. And as always, if you would be so kind as to share this on social media, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, all those things, and uh, you know, tell a friend about the show, get someone, you know, looped into uh, what we're doing here, rope them in and uh, convince them that this is something they want to, uh, this little community that we have participate in. As always, I mentioned, get down and leave your comments, say hi, ask your questions, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And I'll do my best to pop up four videos on the screen. There's so much more information about Nicaragua, travel, retirement, any number of things, living abroad, expatting, digital nomadry. Just click on a video, explore our little community.